Hi, my name is Matthias Verras. I'm an independent consultant and I'm sort of specialized in helping teams deal with legacy code. So I'd like to show you a quick example of how I work. I have a bit of code here. It's a group service. It takes a group repository and a pupil repository as uh, constructor arguments and it has one method uh, called add that takes an ID and a pupil ID. So immediately the first thing I do when I see uh, this sort of code is try to uh, reflect my insights into the code, not by adding comments, but by actually renaming stuff to make it more explicit. For example, we see a group repository here, but the variable is named repository. And that's maybe a little bit confusing. Um, in this case, it's just a very short class, but uh, sometimes you have these uh, 5,000 line controllers, and then it's really helpful to make uh, your variable names very explicit. So we can let uh, IDE do the work. There's uh, all kinds of refactors here. Uh, for example, rename is one I use a lot. This is group repository, so we just rename it. And you can see that it changes right here and right here. Same thing with the class property. We rename it to group repository. And you see that it changes everywhere. We'll do the same thing here. We have an ID and a pupil ID. The ID is used to find a group in the group repository, so that's in fact a group ID. So let's see what happens. Um, it's a group repository. It takes a group and a pupil ID and then uh, it finds those. And we can see just by reading the code that the important stuff is this part. We add the pupil to the group and then we persist that group. And everything else looks like it's business rules. Like here we are counting the number of pupils that are in the group, etc. So this group, this method uh, clearly is about adding a pupil to a group. So let's uh, rename it. Maybe even something more explicit if we talk to the uh, domain expert, maybe he will tell uh, us something like, yes, we enlist pupils in a group. Uh, so if you try to find that domain language and incorporate it in your code, then you make things a lot more explicit and it will make communication with the domain experts and with customers easier. So again, we can use the rename refactor and call this method enlist pupil in group. So what happens? We have a group repository, we have some pupils, maybe Again, this is a little bit confusing because we have this pupil and this list of pupils. So let's rename this. Uh, for example, pupils, uh, let's just say pupils in group. And add pupil, that's weird. This, if you look here, it reads really bad. Group, add pupil, add pupil. So maybe just say uh, the pupil to be enlisted. I know it's a bit, uh, it's long and um, we, we like to avoid long names, long variable names, but it's sort of a in-between step. We can do it now to make things clear because we have this really huge method in some cases, not here but in, in real legacy code. Uh, and then it's really useful to have very explicit names. And once we start refactoring and moving stuff out of there, we will have smaller methods and we can use shorter names again. So we have the pupils in group um, for each pupils in group S. We can make that pupil in group. Again, that's very explicit. Uh, and then here we compare the IDs and we set some temporary value. And we use it here uh, to, to throw an exception. So pupil already in group exception. So what we are basically doing here, we loop over all the pupils in the group. Uh, we compare them by ID. So if the pupil we want to enlist is already one of the pupils in the group, then we set this variable, variable to true, and then we will throw this pupil already in group exception. So we can just rename, temp is a really bad name for a variable, it doesn't mean anything. We can rename it to uh, pupil already in group. There we go. So let's, uh, before we do any uh, real refactors, uh, 
we need to make sure that we don't make any mistakes so we need to get this method under test and um, let's just again uh, have the ID do the work for us there we go group service test maybe move this to a test namespace and let's just run it for good measure there we go there's it's green of course because we are not testing anything yet so um, we need our we need to uh, define our system under test let's just do that in the setup method and of course we are testing the group service so this system under test is a new group service and uh, let's import that class of course uh, it's complaining because we need the two repositories group repository and uh, pupil repository maybe I'll make those uh, class properties as well so we can easily get to them later and let's just add these fields test as well they should actually be private it doesn't really m matter that much that they should be private but for good measure but what I like to do is uh, add dog blocks so we can help the IDE understand uh, and ourselves uh, what is in there group repository we import the class that's a pupil repository I hate typing that word I always type it wrong and this is of course the group service there we go so we still need to define those repositories um, so normally if this was real life then this uh, group repository and pupil repository they are just interfaces now but they would have an implementation and that implementation would uh, persist the group or the pupil to a database somewhere and uh, it, for example this could be uh, a database group repository or doctrine or proper group repository um, implementing this interface but in in our case we don't have those this is just some sample code so I didn't actually implement those and we don't want them because in our tests we want to if we really want to make uh, small and fast unit tests then we want to avoid, avoid uh, writing to a real database so what we're going to do is mock them. Um, if you've never uh, seen mocks before, I'm not going to uh, explain in detail how it works, but you can find lots of resources about uh, mocking. And PHP unit has uh, some nice mocking features. So our group repository is a mock for the school group repository interface. And the same thing for the pupil. So and now we can uh, now that we have a system under test configured, we can try uh, exercising it. We need a group ID. Let's just take some value for now and a pupil ID, and let's try to run our test again. So it's uh, failing. So let's see what happens. Call to a member function get pupils on a non-object. So let's click through and see where this happens. So here we are calling the get pupils method on the group and the group is something we got from the group repository from the find method but because this group repository is a mock it's not doing anything here so we need to train the mock uh, to return a group when we pass it a group id so let's do that in our test method this group repository so this is how mocks work, you tell them uh, to expect, for example, once in this case, that a certain method will be called, find method, and when that happens, uh, it should be called with a group ID, let's reuse this one and uh, extract it to a constant, there we go, cell group ID. And when that happens, it should return a group. 
and of course we need to define that there it is maybe at a dog block as well so this is a group entity and uh, we should set it up it's a new group and the group takes an ID so we can reuse that same group ID obviously so now what will happen when uh, we run this test the group repository mock expects that the find method will be called once with the group ID as a parameter and uh, when it is called it will return a group entity that we configured here so if we run our test now then we see that we we've gotten to a different error so we we moved forward a little bit let's run it again with uh, code coverage it's always very good to test your assumptions by generating code coverage let's see so we have uh, we covered all this that makes sense but clearly we did something wrong um, okay I think I know what I did wrong uh, so this okay this is a, a little detail I forgot about to return uh, the value this group so it's the same thing um, when this method is called it will return a value namely this group and this should be a little bit better there we go we can now see that uh, a lot more of our code uh, has been covered so it's a uh, it, so it's always a very good idea to check your code coverage because it it tells you whether your assumption that something is being covered by a test is right or not don't use code coverage uh, across your whole test suite uh, because that's not really an interesting metric but for these small uh, cases where you just run one test and validate that it covers indeed what you thought it covered that's a very good uh, way to, to uh, you know prevent uh, stupid mistakes so and it's important to understand that the lines that are green here we are not saying they are correct or incorrect we are just saying they have been covered or they have not been covered so um, we have a group from our group repository um, we call the group get pupils method it uh, returns a, probably an empty array of pupils in the group because we didn't add any pupils there and uh, then here we get the pupil to be enlisted and I think that's the one where we are crashing now so group add pupil must be an instance of pupil null given so um, this is where it happens group add pupil pupil to be enlisted and pupil to be enlisted it's the same problem as before uh, this is a null because we haven't trained this mock uh, pupil repository to actually return a pupil so it's basically the same thing as we did before we need the pupil repository this expects once method find with uh, in this case we'll reuse this one and that's our pupil ID so with self okay pupil ID and this one uh, will return a value more specifically a pupil Let's set up the pupil as well. Import the class, make it private, and set it up right here. And instantiate it with a pupil ID. So let's run our test again. We should see. Uh, some progress here and there we go so now what has happened um, this pupil uh, the pupil repository found a pupil to be enlisted uh, we counted the pupils in the group uh, there's less than three because well we know there's they are empty for now 
um, we looped over them. Well, there's nothing to loop, so that's why these two lines have not been covered. And then uh, if this variable is, uh, is uh, not set, then and it's not true, then we add the pupil uh, to be enlisted to the group and we persist the group. So even though our test is passing now, uh, we haven't actually tested anything yet. We have just executed this code with two mocked repositories, but we haven't actually done anything or actually validated that it does what it's supposed to do. So what is it supposed to do? Well, it's a group service. It enlists a pupil in a group. So let's just name our method that. It should enlist pupil in group. And you can notice that I use a different uh, naming convention for test methods because this is this is not a method in the same way that this is a method. This is just uh, uh, this is actually a description of what this test does. So I use this different notation to sort of uh, visualize that it's something entirely different. It's not production code. It's uh, uh, something. You know, it's, it's you you could do this with a different uh, testing framework where you wouldn't have functions, etc., and then you could still use these same notations. I hope that makes sense. Anyway, so it should enlist a pupil in a group. So we can easily validate that. We have the group, and uh, it should be empty to begin with. We can add a guard clause for that. So uh, let's say this asserts empty um, this group. Get pupils. So this is not part of the actual test, but it's again something that you can do to validate your assumptions uh, before you actually do the, the testing. So and then we, we're going to test if the group now contains the actual pupil that we think is being added. So this uh, sort of equals First, we in a PHP unit, first you write the expected value, and that's an array, of course, containing the one pupil. And then uh, the actual system under test. Um, no, I'm sorry. The group, we get the pupils. So I think this is pretty clear what it does. We assert that when we call the get pupils method, uh, we will get an array of one pupil. So that validates that our uh, system under test is actually enlisting a pupil in a group. So let's run this. And that's great. We can uh, run it again with code coverage. It's still going well. There's one more thing. So um, we have proven now that we are actually adding a pupil to a group and that this code works. But we haven't proven that we actually persisted because Imagine that we don't have this line. Uh, when we uh, run this code in production and it's, uh, it's in a web request, then the next request won't have the group. So we haven't really proven that this uh, method does everything it's, it's supposed to do. So of course, we cannot check the database because this is not a real uh, group repository. It's just a mock. But we can uh, tell our mock to expect that this group will be persisted. So that's uh, very similar to what we've done before. Um, let's add that right here. This group repository expects once the method persists with this, uh, sorry, with this group, of course. So if you run the test again, it's green. And now we can, it's always good to watch your test fail. So if we turn off this line, then we can see that the test fails. Same thing for this line. And the test fails. So watching a test fail is another great way to, to test that your test is correct, to test your own assumptions. So this is very nice. We have uh, a test. Let's make this a little bit more readable because if we come back to this in six months or some other team member reads this, it's going to be a little bit hard to decipher what's going on. So we can use the extract method this time from our uh, refactoring toolkit. So these these refactors in uh, in PHP Storm they are they are safe. They are guaranteed to be safe. So 
if for some reason uh, PHP unit uh, uh, PHP storm cannot uh, do a refactor safely and uh, be 100% sure that the code is uh, behaving exactly the same way then it will uh, disallow the refactor so we have a lot of uh, we can be confident that this is going to work so what is this little block of code doing well um, let's say expects that a group is found there we go this pupil repository same thing expect that a pupil is found and here we will uh, expect that uh, the group is persisted let's group this a little so this makes it a little more a little bit more uh, readable uh, and you can you should do that a lot uh, extract method to make things readable this is a nice short readable test um, so your future self will, will thank you okay so now we have one test but clearly we haven't covered everything so there's a couple of edge cases and and these cases uh, uh, these are our, our business rules um, it's always good to validate those with uh, with a domain expert or with your customer, uh, especially if you're looking at legacy code and you're trying, uh, as we're, do we're doing now, trying to discover the business rules from the actual code. And it's a good thing to, to validate those. But let's just now assume that they are correct and try to put this under test. So we have all these nested ifs and for each. We don't really like that, but let's start with looking at what happens uh, on the outside because that's the easiest thing. So here we are saying too many pupils exceptions, uh, too many pupils exception, and this happens when uh, the pupils in the group are uh, greater or equal than three. So let's write a test uh, that uh, proves that this works. So it should uh, disallow more than three pupils in the group so how, how are we going to test this well um, it's going to be a little bit the same thing here let's just uh, copy these two expects that the group is found we expect that the pupil is found uh, we are going to attempt to enlist the pupil in the group but the group already has three pupils now so this group a pupil and that's a new pupil let's just give him a, an ID it doesn't really matter what ID it is so this group now has three pupils we expect that the group is found we expect that the pupil is found we try to enlist an additional pupil in the group and we expect now and that's another PHP unit feature set expected exception school and let me just check that's too many pupils exception so now this test is going to pass if this exception is actually thrown by our code so let's run it and we can see that oh, maybe let's just run the one test so we don't pollute our uh, code coverage there we go so now we can see uh, our code is covered up to here we are counting the pupils in the group this block is skipped, we go to the else block, the exception is thrown, and our test is passing. And it's always good, as I said before, to uh, watch your test fail. So if we run it again, then we can see that it fails. It will actually tell us here, failed asserting that exception of type too many pupils exception is thrown. So that's good. This is uh, working as we thought it worked. And we have one more pupil already in group exception. So that's another business case, that's another test. The, so it should uh, disallow duplicate pupils. And it's very similar to our previous test. We have uh, these two expectations. We set a different exception. 
So copy pasting is bad. Don't copy me. I'm just doing it to speed things up a little. Well, that's always the excuse, of course. So anyway, uh, we still need to uh, add our pupil. So this time we're adding the same pupil to the group. Uh, so it's already in the group and we're trying to add it again. So here we add it uh, like this, directly into the group. And then here we enlisted the pupil in the group uh, in the same way. And so we expect now that this uh, system under test is going to throw a pupil already in group exception. Let's uh, run the code. The test passes. We can see that, um, no, I have to run it with coverage. I'm running the wrong test. So see, this is an ex exactly uh, the sort of example why you need to make sure that you watch a test fail. I've been running the wrong test and assuming that it uh, passed. So this should be better. So now we can actually see our uh, code coverage. We're going into this first if block and then here we are skipping uh, this if block and moving directly to the uh, throwing of the exception. And again, if we turn it off, we should see that the test fails. So that's very good. And now we can run all three tests. And they are all green, that's great. And we can also observe that uh, everything is being covered now. So once again, uh, having coverage doesn't prove uh, that you've actually tested everything, but it's sort of an, a negative metric. If something, if something is not covered, then you know for sure that it's not being tested. If something is covered, then you don't know for sure that it's being tested. So, so and now, and if you look at this, then you can, you know, sort of collapse these tests, uh, and it becomes very readable. You can actually show this to your domain expert and ask if this is true. It should enlist a pupil in the group, it should disallow more than three pupils in the group, it should disallow duplicate pupils. Your domain expert will say, oh yeah, exactly, that's right, that's how we meant it all those years back when uh, we didn't have a lot of money and we paid someone to write this code. Uh, that was the original ID we had. Okay, let me just uh, turn off the coverage now. So. That's all very good. You, you could actually stop here and commit that and you'd already have made an improvement because you have now uh, put some code under test. But all these new insights that we have about this block of code, we want to reflect that in the code, uh, just as I did at the beginning. So let's start again looking at this, this uh, set of nested ifs and for each. I don't like that. So let's try to find ways to make that simpler. And one thing you can you can often do is uh, turn an if uh, around. For example here, if we count that pupils are less than three, um, that's, we can state that in a, in a different way by saying if the count of the pupils in the group is greater or equal than three, then we throw this exception. So, and we run our tests they are still green, so this is equivalent. So we can get rid of this if block. We don't need this anymore. So uh, we, we've re reduced the, the indentation here, the level of nesting, by one. And this, the code is still behaving exactly the same way, because if we throw the exception here, we are getting out of this method. So that's very nice. We can uh, try doing that again uh, here. If not, people are already in group. That's sort of another inverse uh, if. So if we say if pupil already in group, then we throw a new pupil already in group exception. Run the tests, they are green, so we can get rid of this if block. Run the test again, or run them with coverage. You can see still everything is still being covered. We just rearrange some stuff, and we can do so with confidence. Uh, simply because we have those tests. So tests give you give you a lot of security. They make you feel confident that you can change code because if you change it and you break it, then you will know right away. So uh, uh, this is very nice. Now let's uh, use the same extract method that we used before to make this a little more clear once again. So 
these things, uh, we call them guards. They guard certain business rules. So we can make that very explicit. So, uh, for example, here, guard against too many pupils. Make that private. So as you can see, this uh, uh, this little block of code was now moved to this private method. Um, maybe I'll I'll do it again and I'll do one little change. So here we have the pupils in group and we are using it here as well. But I think it's a little more clear and explicit if we inline this. So um, it's this is where we where we make the uh, where we get the variable we get it from the group. So this is equivalent uh, with this code. There we go. Let the IDE do the work. So now we, we just call this immediately instead of putting this in a temporary variable first. And the benefit, in my opinion, is that when we now do this extract method again, guard against uh, too many pupils, then we're not passing a list of uh, pupils, but we're just passing the group, so that's a little more explicit, in my opinion. And here, same thing. All of this, all this code is just meant to to check this business rule to avoid duplicate pupils. So that's another guard, guard against duplicate pupils, and that's another private. So and you can see that the IDE was smart enough to pass in the variables that we need, uh, the group and the pupil. And we can make that a little even a little more uh, explicit by adding the type hints. So this is a pupil, and now it's it's uh, we can even rename this again. As I said in the beginning, we can have shorter variables if our methods are shorter because it's a uh, um, easier to understand just from context. Uh, I did something wrong. Just rename to pupil. So that's very nice. So if we look at this code now, it's uh, it's very explicit. Uh, we get two uh, variables. Let's rename this one as well. We get two variables from the repository based on these IDs. We guard against some business rules. And we do the actual uh, adding and the actual persistence uh, of the group. So in these, these three parts match very well to our three methods here, or our three tests. So we enlist a pupil in a group, disallow more than three pupils, disallow duplicate pupils. That's exactly the same thing here. We enlist a pupil, disallow too many pupils, disallow duplicate pupils. So this is this is already a lot better if you compare that to our original version. Again, you could easily commit this right now and you, you'd have done a, a huge improvement. But uh, now is the chance to, to actually change some stuff that is going to make life easier in the future. Um, because the problem with this whole service is, imagine that you have a new member on your team or maybe yourself in, in 6 or 12 months. You forgot about this uh, group service and you forgot about this method and you want to add a pupil to a group and you just write this code directly in a controller or in some other service then these two business rules are not going to be guarded so you'll have a problem this this sort of thing leads to all kinds of weird bugs so the problem that we have is that actually this knowledge about the business this is in the wrong place this shouldn't, this shouldn't be uh, this high level. It's so important. It's, it, it, it's an invariant of group. It cannot be violated. So we should move this to the actual group. So whenever we call add pupil, these rules should be protected. So uh, let's see, our tests are still running. So we are still uh, happy. We can still change stuff. And uh, we'll notice if we break something. So how are we going to move this? Well, simple. We can... Uh, Start by copying them, then let's open our group. Here's our add pupil method. So right now it's not doing anything interesting, just adding the pupil. But let's now move these cards here. And of course we need to uh, have the actual implementations as well. 
and there we go we just copy them here in our uh, group entity so and now we don't need to pass the group here anymore because it's a uh, we are we are actually in the group so we can use this so that's very easy just replace this like that uh, adapt our uh, dog block same thing here um, we can actually use another refactor called change signature and just take it out and that will adapt all client code as well we replace the group variable with this and we don't need to pass it in here either so again this should be very readable when we add a pupil we guard against these two rules before we actually add the pupil uh, let's run our tests they are still happy let's look back at our group service we can now remove the code here remove the guards here run the tests and the tests are green, this code is all covered, and of course all the code in our group entity is covered as well. So now we have actually improved our code substantially because we have now made it harder to break. It's now impossible for a developer to add a pupil to a group uh, without passing uh, through those two uh, guards. So the last thing we could do, but I'm, I'm going to stop right here, but the last thing we could do is actually move uh, the, this tests, these two tests to, uh, oh, sorry, these two tests to a group test instead of a group service test, because that's where our code is, that's where our uh, business logic is now. But I'll leave that as an exercise uh, for yourself. It should be self-evident how to do it. So uh, that's about it. I hope this was helpful. Thanks for uh, watching this, and uh, see you again later. Bye.